old British clubland wood panel interiors, tweed jackets and average build quality. For years they were associated with Jaguar, but not anymore. This is the Jaguar F-Pace SVR. It's the biggest and baddest of all the F-Paces and you know it's the real deal because it has no fake vents. They're all real. Borrowing more than a little from the smaller XE sedan, the F-Pace was also designed by Ian Callum and has some seriously good looks. With black accents, big 21 inch wheels and four exhausts delivering a huge noise. Is it a turn back car, a car so good looking that you would turn back to look at it after you parked it? It's a Jag, there's no discussion. I really like the interior, it's a great design, if maybe just a little bit dated. We did see this dash design in the XE around about five years ago and there's nothing wrong with this, it's just that maybe things have moved on a little bit. The uh, smaller E-Pace has a more contemporary design than this one, but it still works very well. We've got uh, beautiful quilted seats here with uh, full 10-way electric adjustment for the two front seats. They are both heated and cooled. We've got the leather steering wheel with a lot of buttons on it. Unfortunately, you probably do have to take your eyes off the road momentarily to work out which button you're pushing until you get used to it. Leather on the doors. A quirky feature here with the window controls up here on the window windowsill and the memory controls for the seat down here on the armrest. It seems like they're backwards to me. I'm, the number of times I've gone to put the window down and accidentally moved my seat instead. There's a little storage space here under the uh, next to the gear shift under the center screen console. We've got a couple of cup holders here in the front, a nice big deep bin here with USB outlets and a power outlet and uh, nice deep storage bins in the doors as well. I really like the way the uh, stop start button here for the engine actually pulls pulsates like a heartbeat before you uh, turn the engine on. There's ambient lighting, you can choose your own colour from the centre screen, but when you turn the car into dynamic mode, everything turns red, it's very dramatic. The centre screen features Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and controls most of the car's features, including the ability to personalise the dynamic drive mode. Sitting in the back seat here, the first thing I'm actually struck by is how much room there is. This is a very wide car, so there's actually quite comfortably room for three adults here on the back seat bench. I'm sitting behind my own position of 190 centimetres tall, and I've got plenty of room. My knees actually aren't even touching the seat in front of me. Plenty of toe room, plenty of headroom, and of course that beautiful view from the uh, panoramic roof up there just looks magnificent. The two outside seats here on the rear are heated. There's two USB outlets as well, and a 12 volt power power outlet. All up, yep, I could do a long trip in the back seat here quite easily. The F-Pace is not short on boot space, 650 litres with the seats up or 1740 if you drop them down, more than enough room for a family's worth of gear. The engine is a supercharged 5 litre V8 outputting 550 kilowatts of power, 680 newton metres of torque. It'll get you to 100 kilometres per hour in just 4.3 seconds. Second gear at 100, yep, done. And fuel economy is 11.7 .7 litres per 100 kilometres, although I must admit in the week I've had this car, I was closer to 18. There is so much power and it's just there all the time. And the noise is incredible. The first time I drove this car out of the dealership, it backfired almost straight away, which is very easy to do in this car. You just take your foot off the gas and you could not wipe the smile off my face. And not long after that, I pulled up at the lights and two guys in the truck next to me saw the four exhaust pipes at the back, wound down the window and gave me a bit of this, saying that they wanted to hear the engine rev. I obliged. In dynamic mode, there is just so much responsiveness from the engine. It really is just the most fun you can have. I wouldn't recommend driving in dynamic around town though. On suburban streets, it's just a bit too much. It's a little bit too full on. But the great thing with this car is you can enjoy the dynamic mode sound without having the performance by just pushing the little exhaust button down here on the center console. And that keeps the valves open at the back and that glorious sound echoing through the neighborhood. Speaking of which, I owe my neighbors a huge apology. I think I better review an electric car next week. That noise. You never get tired of that. It's a bit of a shame though because V8 engines, they're gonna become a little rarer in years to come as the world goes electric. 
I don't think they'll completely disappear, but they probably just won't be your daily driver. They might be something you save for the weekend. There's just no lag in power. There's no turbo lag. It just takes off no matter what speed you're doing or what gear you're in, the power is always there. As a car reviewer, I try to stay very objective and fair and balanced in my reviews, but I do have to say I've fallen in love with the Jaguar F-Pace SVR. I think it's probably the best car I've reviewed on this channel so far. At 140 grand, it's fantastic value. It's around about half the price of a Maserati Levante GTS. Only the Jaguar has better interior technology, the engine is bigger than the Maserati, and it gets to 100 kilometers per hour at about the same speed. So if you're in the market for a V8 SUV, I think the Jag is well worth your consideration.